Good morning, everyone. Welcome to CNE Sales Monthly Webinar Series. I'm Jeff Butler, the Technical Manager here at CNE. Today's webinar is titled Trends in Industrial Lighting and Indication. Our presenter today is Rob Wiedemann, Senior Business Development Manager, Lighting Division with Banner Engineering. Rob's a double E from North Dakota State and has an MBA from the University of Minnesota. He's been at Banner for over 13 years in a variety of sales and technical support roles. He works out of Banner's headquarters in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Just a heads up, Rob will be doing some polling during the webinar. A couple of multiple choice type surveys will pop up during the webinar, so please participate for us. If you have questions during the webinar series, please submit them using the control panel tool on the right side of your screen, and we'll address them at the end of the session. If you don't see that tool, click on the red horizontal arrow. Everyone registered for the webinar will receive a link to the recording. Please be sure to attend next month's webinar hosted by Heinz Connected of CNE Sales. Heinz is one of our safety specialists and his topic will be integrating fluid power into safety functions. That webinar is hosted on November 12th and starts at 10:30. I'll now turn today's webinar over to Rob. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff. We will get going here. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, uh, I'm stationed out of Minneapolis at Banner's headquarters. This morning I find myself in Detroit. Uh, so greetings from kind of a gloomy, rainy uh, auto city. Uh, put my contact information here for everyone. Uh, so like Jeff mentioned, feel free to drop in questions uh, as we move through the webinar. Uh, we can address those uh, as Jeff moderates them to me or save them for the end. In addition, uh, you've got my contact information here. Uh, certainly happy to support what you're working on. And of course, we'll involve uh, both CNE and Banner regional sales staff uh, as necessary to make sure you get the best, fast response report as possible. So we're going to start, of course, related to lighting and indication trends. Let's talk a little bit about the power of light. So there's one light that in a matter of minutes destroyed $694 million in productivity. And you may have guessed, or some of you uh, in the CNE land may have even strolled outside in the path of totality to watch the solar eclipse you know, this August. So someone estimated that all of us sneaking outside for just a few minutes to stare up into the sky cost uh, $694 million in lost productivity sure about all those calculations but it's impressive what one light like the sun can do for us additionally we can talk about the power of light uh, to do things like relieve stress we know that uh, blue light can be used to treat uh, certain conditions uh, we know that different color temperatures of white light can be used to uh, improve circadian rhythm disorders uh, and improve general uh, overall health and attentiveness we can also use industrial type lights in a hospital environment to relieve the stress of patients. This is actually an application where we'll be using a tower light fitted with a programmable audible module to indicate the arrival of medication to a hospital floor, in this particular case to a children's floor in a hospital. And so instead of a beep or annoying alarm like we might hear in a traditional factory, this alarm will be playing Mary Had a Little Lamb to signal to the nurses and physicians that the prescription or medication has arrived, but not uh, requiring a, a loud, annoying beep uh, that would upset some of the children to do so. So kind of a cool way to apply lighting or lighting and audible products outside of a traditional factory environment. Additionally, you might want to take a lighting product uh, and relieve some stress at the end of a bad day. Not normal usage shown here. Hopefully you see that video. Uh, some colleagues of mine over in Europe took uh, see about one kilo hammer, a two pound hammer and beat on a banner indicator that you see there. And the polycarbonate shell certainly survived that impact well. When we talk about the power of light in a more traditional sense, we're typically talking about giving light to our operators to help them work more efficiently, to help them see what they're doing. And we're talking about using indicators to give machinery and equipment a voice. All of these uses are 
very powerful in a traditional factory automation environment. So when we look at the power of light, what we'll get into is the evolution of light as we've arrived uh, today with very advanced LED technology, as we're deploying that technology uh, in different shapes and styles and colors, we're finding many opportunities to improve productivity, to increase employee morale, improve the quality of the products that we're building, and even, especially on the machine builder side, to differentiate ourselves from the competition and to improve our sales growth based on not only the functionality of the equipment, but on the general appeal that lighting can add. So a very brief, straightforward agenda for the remainder of the webinar. We're gonna cover six different trends uh, that I'm seeing in industrial lighting and indication. For each one of those, we'll associate a couple of applications, give some real world tie in to what I see going on. And at the end, of course, we'll have time for questions. So the six trends should be popping up onto your screen. We're gonna talk about using illumination for productivity and quality. We're gonna talk about supply chain simplification, some maintenance savings, and then the addition of indication to illumination and also some process control elements. So starting with illumination for productivity, the bottom line is we're using light to help our operators see what they're doing. Of course, this is nothing new. Uh, if you can't see what you're doing, you don't do anything at all. But the change to any lighting, LED lighting, and uh, especially means we can put light exactly where the operators need it. We can tailor the light to the specific application at hand. Uh, others uh, involved in more technical studies can report back to us and show, as one example here, an 8.3% improvement in visual and cognitive tasks with the addition of lighting. Of course, there are also historical applications where just the idea that a light has been added uh, leads to the operator knowing that they're being watched and maybe improving their productivity uh, only under the threat of being watched. Uh, but actually we can prove that there is a uh, physical response in what the operator is able to see and do by having better lighting, better task lighting. One element of that is the color temperature of the light. So you see here the spectrum of white light starting on the left, a very warm side. Uh, of course, this is measured in degrees Kelvin. Uh, today's presentation will not be very technical. Uh, this is uh, about as number and in fact oriented as we'll get. We'll start at 2000 Kelvin on the left, very red, very warm white colors, uh, moving over to 7000 K on the right, very cool blue colors. And in the middle, you see about 5000 K for standard daylight conditions. And you see here some suggestions for general usage of different color temperatures. But what we see in the mid and cold ranges, uh, not necessarily as shown here for more office uh, light environments. Uh, I like this image for the way it displays the color temperature and gives uh, maybe more common applications. Uh, but in industrial environments, we see a lot of lighting usage in the 5000K band, uh, shown here as daylight. Uh, so you'd see the white light kind of middle of the day from the sun, able to uh, promote alertness, as you see here, uh, not be too harsh, too blue, um, feels like a, a natural light to work in and does help operators see better what they're doing. As we move to the bluer side towards maybe 6,000 K, that particular color temperature of white also provides very high contrast and so is typically used in inspection type applications. So lots of ways we can, of course, just help operators see what they're doing and therefore improve their productivity. So we might apply this to things as basic as workstations, right? hang the light very near to the operator. Uh, in this case, you know, three to four feet mounting height would be typical. Rather than focusing on a very high budget, uh, high time investment project to perhaps replace all the high bay lighting, we see a, a general trend into bringing the light down to the work area. In this case, a, a workstation with some bins, traditional assembly type area, but also even an assembly type fixture where the operator will be placing various parts into the work cell 
and just giving that operator a little bit extra light to see what they're doing should speed their performance and reduce some errors. We can add larger lights in a similar fashion. So here would be more assembly areas. So rather than just that operator specific workstation, give you the general area some extra light and see here's some harness manufacturing or just part placement into a machine. Again, these operators can now see what they're doing better. In both cases, you do see that there are high bay lights on the ceiling that for one reason or another, uh, maybe distance, maybe specification, maybe they're old and getting dim, uh, but they aren't giving the operators the light they need. And rather than replace those in a very expensive project, we bring the light down to the operator. Another application consideration, you see here a machine with a very large door. Uh, in this case, there's some uh, wire processing going on inside, very uh, reflective wire material in this machine. And the particular light they're using has a dimming function, so it'll operate at 100% typically, if it can be dimmed to 50%. And so in this case, when the door is closed, you're able to look through the hard guarding uh, that you can see there on the, the top side of the door. And so when the door is closed, that light will be maintained at 100% to allow operators to look through the hard guarding and see the process going on inside the machine. And when the door is open, because of the highly reflective nature of the material, the lights will actually dim to 50% because of course now you add some ambient light and you are not looking through hard guarding. And so the lighting at 100% on the very reflective material would actually be very harsh for the operator. So this machine builder was tailoring their lighting usage to provide more lighting comfort, but still uh, a great opportunity to watch the machine while in process or during a stoppage. Might also see lights being used, uh, in this case, uh, furniture assembly or, or mixed assembly. High volume of different pieces, uh, small changes in the profile of wood in this particular case. And so these operators just need a little bit extra light to make sure they're putting the right parts in the right kit or performing the right assembly step. Again, you see lights on the ceiling and in this case, task lighting added about 10 to 12 feet in the air above these operators, just give them a little bit extra and improve what they're working on. Second trend we've got going, very similar, but illumination for quality. So in addition to helping operators work more quickly, more efficiently, we can also help them identify defects, maybe limit some of their mistakes, and making sure they're using the right part or component, and also use lighting for visual inspection, manual visual inspection. And when we talk about inspection, Typically three things we would vary in the usage of lights is color, intensity, and angle. And so we can change all of those factors, of course, depending on the size of the fixture and the application area to reflect the light in such a way that the operator can more easily see uh, defects, scratches, blemishes, a uh, wrong part in the wrong position, uh, all things of that sort. And so you might see lights applied in something like inspection tunnels. In this case, a retouch booth for some automotive components. So here we can, of course, control the intensity and geometry of the lighting. In this case, the goal is to get very even light across the entire part surface. So that if the operator brings in a, a part for rework, he's able to see the defect very clearly and then make sure that that defect is resolved before the part is passed. One particular lighting application we see for manual visual inspection is regarding the use of green light. In this case, uh, from the visual, uh, I'm sorry, visible spectrum of white light, of course we go from red to orange, yellow, green to blue to the purples, and the human eye actually responds uh, with higher sensitivity to the green wavelengths in the middle of that band. And so by installing green lights, uh, the human eye is of course able to see some defects uh, more easily on a variety of parts. Uh, we've seen success here uh, very frequently in stamped metal parts, also some plastic molded uh, or stamped parts, and glass inspection has also been a very solid application for the use of green light. Again, just picking the right color. This might be complete area surrounded by green light, or as you can see in the lower right image, 
uh, using some linear lights to actually create a line effect that also provides extra definition to specific defects. We can also just look at general part inspection. Now this could be offline uh, for a quality professional taking pieces from the line and doing conformance checks, or this could be an inline process where parts are coming out the line or parts are moving between steps and the quality inspection is happening during uh, the standard process. Again, nice bright light here associated with some uh, buttons as well, allowing that operator, in this case his supervisor as well, to see what's going on. Different type of application, but becoming much more prevalent, uh, the use of robots for processing parts. Uh, and of course, the robots don't particularly need to see what they're working on, but human operators still keep an eye on them, uh, monitoring uh, their performance and the uh, outcomes they're generating. So in this case, we see nice white lights inside the robot cell. There's two applications. Of course, we see the clear window towards the back, allowing human operators to look into the cell and see what the robots are working on. But in addition, if you look towards the ceiling in the back, you'll see a, a small dome that has a camera behind it. And so this also allows for some monitoring via camera by a remote employee. Um, checking coordinates and performance and, and so forth related, uh, in this case, to uh, finishing uh, a metal part inside this robotic cell. So if the robots don't need to see, we still want to keep an eye on what they're doing uh, and putting lights into their work area is a very effective way to do that. Next trend is uh, an add-on to illumination using illumination and automation type application and that's combining illumination with indication. So now we get the benefits of illumination that we've discussed previously in general, providing white light for operators to see what's going on. But we're also adding high visibility indication. So we're putting colors in where it was previously just a single white light. Now we can have both the supervisor and operator quickly understand the status of that machine. Uh, a common example would be, of course, a operator working under nice white light and all of a sudden his workstation goes red uh, signaling for example an emergency stop condition or a door open condition that operator wasn't forced to take his eyes off of what he's working on wasn't forced to go to a panel to look up at a tower light or go elsewhere on the machine for status information he knows that his whole work area just went red uh, he has something else to resolve before continuing production so one application of that would be doing some zoning on machines. Uh, here we see an isolator type machine, which in a good condition would be all white, therefore allowing the operator on the outside to see through the window and have a very clear view of what's going on inside uh, the isolated environment. But of course, in this case, we see a red light on the right side, uh, perhaps signaling a stop condition or a part shortage condition, something that needs attention and is indicated because it's not white. We can also do things uh, like indicate simple workstation status. Uh, and though the operator might be very aware of the condition of his particular workstation, as we think about a factory full of workstations, perhaps down a very long line or a variety of them stacked back to back in a concentrated area, what we might see is that all of a sudden one workstation is glowing shown here red or yellow or blue some color other than white uh, allowing of course the operator to see uh, that something is not in a normal condition but also supervisors uh, walking by uh, or people responsible for for example bringing parts to know exactly which workstation they're going to uh, they're not lost in the sea of tower lights they're just looking uh, at perhaps very long distances whereas the blue workstation that's where i need to bring more parts now and so their performance should be improved uh, in resolving whatever need is indicated by the colored status. Typically what we're gonna see when combining illumination and indication is that it's supplemental to an existing tower light or an existing indicator. So here, of course, you see the tower light in red uh, accompanied by the work area, the machine itself glowing red, and as well as in this case, an HMI showing uh, a stop condition you might see there. Uh, 
but walking through a, a variety of these machines, the red one will certainly catch your eye, whereas the other ones in white will just allow the operator to see what's going on in that machine environment, but not draw attention uh, the way it would be needed to resolve a problem. You might also use multiple colors to indicate different processes. So here you look through different stations of this machine and you see white and blue and red. So these lights, of course, can indicate that uh, process is ongoing or perhaps it's paused in the middle where blue is, uh, again, providing operator uh, or supervisory personnel the opportunity to see what's going on. And from the machine manufacturer's side, or maybe more critically, the sales perspective of the machine manufacturer, uh, this machine looks cool uh, on the floor of a trade show in the factory adding a small investment when you consider the overall machine cost in lights to give a cool factor. So not only do you get to see what's going on in there, but adding colors is, is a new trend that customers and users like that gives the OEM a great opportunity to increase the value of their machine. So Jeff mentioned we've got two polls today. Here's the first one. I'm going to turn on the actual poll. And appreciate any answers uh, that you guys can provide. this open for a couple more seconds. Uh, maybe some of you are joining remotely and unable to vote at this time. And we'll go ahead and close that poll. And we'll get back to the PowerPoint. And continue with trend number four, maintenance savings as it's related to lighting. Again, not a highly technical presentation here, but when we talk about maintenance savings uh, related to uh, upgrading to, in this case, LED technology, of course, we're going to be limiting our replacements uh, in bulbs and ballasts associated with typical fluorescent fixtures. Uh, Customers I've worked with might, on average, estimate, say, a $30 per hour charge for low-level maintenance expense. That's actual cost to the company. And we can estimate about 15 minutes to replace a bulb or 30 minutes to replace a ballast. So very quickly, at $30 an hour by the number of bulbs you might expect in a factory and some ballast, replacing those on even a PM schedule or even as they're broken quickly adds up to a pretty significant maintenance expense on top of the recycling associated with uh, old electronics and old bulbs. And so LED fixtures uh, present an opportunity for much longer lifetime, typically with no parts to ever replace. Driver circuitry is built in, uh, no ballasts are required. And generally, uh, newer LED fixtures uh, course, look different than perhaps the traditional fluorescent box type fixture we're used to seeing, but with some brackets uh, and interesting mechanical design to facilitate faster installation, uh, new wiring advantages, uh, connectors, and industrial connectors instead of wire nuts as one example, uh, allow fixtures to be installed very quickly or replaced very quickly if they are ever damaged. Maybe uh, another important part of this is not only considering the direct expense associated with maintenance staff replacing lighting components, but also considering the opportunity cost. Uh, perhaps a machine is shut down to replace a light that's lost production, or the general opportunity cost of that maintenance person uh, doing a necessary repair versus doing some proactive work uh, to make the equipment run better uh, to complete. 
complete some project task. And so one interesting part about this uh, outside of uh, the maintenance savings and replacement, uh, simply for a preventative maintenance standpoint, is that we can avoid instant breakage. So you see a couple of examples here of LED fixtures. Uh, the top one was in a milling machine. The part flew out, hit the light, broke it, but of course the light is still on and glowing. And so we recommend replacing this fixture uh, from a safety standpoint. This is DC voltage. The operator is not in imminent danger. The light is still on, so the process can be completed until the spare is acquired and the correct time to install it is identified. The bottom, you know, I see uh, an OEM that forgot to take a light out of a press before they were doing a quick test. And so now they have a brand new shop light. Uh, Pretty significant bend in a nice piece of aluminum and a, a plastic window there. Light's still operating. Uh, I don't know that the bend gives them any advantage, but uh, a quick way to pick up a new shop light. Here we have the famous maintenance chandelier. So nice to see that, uh, I believe this was maybe some Unistrut, uh, but perhaps was a welded fixture. Uh, very simple square design. The brackets shown on these particular lights are clip-in brackets, so they each have one center hole. Uh, take a bolt up through the unistrut, attach those, the light will clip in, kind of rock into place in a matter of seconds. You also see, if you look very carefully, that there is only one electrical cord uh, going back to, in this case, a plug in the wall, but to the electrical supply. And then you'll see small pigtails hanging between uh, the other sets of lights. Uh, which is associated with electrical cascading. So in this case, we are supplying only power to the first light and then power to the next three lights comes through the cascade cables, which either allows us to only use one plug or only make one electrical connection and get the full lighting effect in this case of four fixtures. We can also simplify installation by attaching lights directly to other equipment. In this case, you see a safety light curtain uh, on a machine cell. So I would typically consider the space directly behind the safety light curtain to be dead. Uh, there's, the hazard is on that side. There's nothing going on there. We have our setback distance from the hazard. But in this case, we can take advantage of that dead space and not even add any material frame, any mechanical structure to support this light. Uh, this light screen already has slots on the side and adapt very quickly with the T-slot nut and the standard bracketry for this light, tilt it at 45 degrees or rotate it in at 45 degrees. And now you have uh, dead space being used for a light and an illuminated work area without requiring the addition of a new mechanical structure just to support that light. So we're taking advantage of structure that's already there for safety purposes to also add a light. And here, kind of a fun image, which shows the important of flexible use of some of these lights. Uh, many of them, of course, have either clip out mounting options or magnetic mounting options. And so you can do things like leave them on a workstation or a work area for the general benefit of the operator, but then also allow maintenance staff uh, or operators to remove those lights, move them to where they need for a quick spot of troubleshooting uh, or a different uh, panel location, as an example and then replace them to the proper location when they're done, of course, without requiring additional lights or requiring to remember a flashlight um, or power supply. So lots of interesting uses with flexible or semi-permanent mounting of lights. Trend number five, supply chain simplification. In general, uh, we see even Banner as a manufacturing sees this very critically. Uh, the need to reduce our stock uh, and limit the amount of spare parts that we are managing. And along with that, of course, lower inventory cost and shorten lead times. And so one technical opportunity we see there is the use of RGB LEDs, in this case, to get multiple colors uh, from a single device. Uh, here, the seven standard RGB colors come from only three conductors, uh, whether you see that in the Venn diagram or the wiring diagram below. Uh, this allows us, of course, to use a single unit with uh, only three inputs and derive seven colors. So now instead of stocking 
for example, a red, yellow, green unit and a red, green, blue unit, we have a single unit that does all those things, plus provides additional functionality. Similarly, we can use that type of device to reduce our I.O. count. So in general, we could get, in this particular case, seven colors from three uh, controller outputs. But even better would be to get the traditional green, yellow, red from only two outputs, because in the RGB world, red plus green make yellow. So that allows us to reduce our account, maybe save an I.O. slice, or create some flexible insulation that will permit dialing in the right color combination at the last minute because all colors are available, ordering no new parts required. The last trend we're gonna cover is indication for process control. So we talk about visual management, uh, maybe training efficiency, things like quality control, process uh, management, and for some customers, traceability also factors in. So we can look at an application like palletizer status. Here we would expect an operator on a forklift to come up and remove the pallet. Of course, there are safety light curtains in place, and so tripping one of those safety light curtains uh, before uh, the muting condition is applied will cause uh, the need for a reset, the operator to get off of the forklift, potentially go find that reset button, uh, and therefore process time goes up drastically. So what you see here is actually uh, an illumination product being used in green uh, turned into an indicator. Uh, and you also see it alongside the existing uh, tower light or stack light uh, near the top. So the operators were uh, either not paying attention or unable to see this particular tower light. So the customer added much brighter indicator. In this case, we'll toggle between green and red. Green means it's okay to enter the work area, remove the pallet, and continue with the process. Red means stay out. Uh, it's not in a mute condition right now. So increased operator visibility, means fewer false trips of the safety light curtain and better process time overall. We can also do things like conveyor zone control. Uh, here you see a conveyor designed to drop uh, items into bins along the side of the conveyor. In this case, once the bin or tote is full, the operator can actually touch that indicator, combination indicator and illuminated touch button. As they remove the bin, uh, the conveyor belt will then know not to put any new product into that area because there's no tote there to catch it. The operator returns with the empty tote and can touch the button. Now the conveyor knows that it's ready to continue processing items to that location. So one, we see green, we're happy, the tote is there. Uh, we're ready to accept parts. We can change that color then to red or yellow, some second color when the tote is removed and also get the output from the device to tell the machine the status of that location. We can do applications like pick to light. So here you see a variety of uh, lights and with sensors in them so that the operator can now simply follow a green light. This is especially important to our uh, users uh, who have high employee turnover. Uh, of course, low unemployment is great. It does provide some difficulty uh, at operator level type jo jobs, uh, maintaining that staff. And so if your training procedure consists now of following the green light, taking that part or doing that process, instead of reading a complicated manual, you should be able to onboard new employees much faster. Also, we see some trends towards providing clear process status. So in this case, the tower light or stack light is as we've known it for many years, but now with the addition of laser etched marking. So not only do we see the color to catch our attention and let us know that something's going on, but we have a clear status message behind that color to provide further details and not require the operator to remember exactly what the blue light means or perhaps to give the controls staff flexibility in using one color meaning one thing at machine A and that same color meaning something different at machine B and making a differentiation by the label or the laser etching uh, that is done on that tower light. So just wrapping up here, uh, I'd like to open up the second poll. So that should be open now. Again, we appreciate your votes there. Uh, if you're still online and able to respond,
All right, we'll go ahead and shut that one down. And that is the end of today's webinar for me. Again, you see the six trends we covered today. I hope the information, not only about the trends we're seeing, but about the actual application of those trends uh, was helpful for all of you in attendance. And at this time, I'll pass it back to Jeff to open up for any questions that may have come in. All right, Rob, thank you. And very nice job, appreciate it. Um, I'm opening up the question panel right now. And um, for those of you who arrived after the announcements earlier, if you have questions, use that little question uh, segment over there on the uh, control panel for the webinar and type your question in. We'll read those off to Rob. I'm over waiting to see if any questions come in. Just want to remind you of the service that CNE provides with our application engineers. You know, not only do we have experts like Rob to help with uh, lighting applications, we have a staff of CNE engineers that can accompany your salesperson to review applications in various areas such as machine safeguarding, uh, automation, PLC and HMI applications, motion control, machine vision, wireless applications. So anything that you'd have that uh, you'd like help with and would like some ideas and scoping out the uh, best solution for what you're trying to do, we can help you with that uh, service. Well, Rob, I am not seeing any questions come in. So everyone who uh, is on here will receive a link to the recorded webinar. So you'll be able to go back and review it and uh, get the information you need later on. And the other folks who didn't get to make it today will also get that link. So Rob, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar.